ndi banyi ana make nuno no no when the options are clearly pointed out to you making the right choice isn't exactly rocket science so i'll be talking about living culture dead culture your children do not speak Igbo. Shame on you, was the pious exclamation of a colleague once in reaction to my honest, unapologetic response to her inquiry. I wondered why I should be ashamed for a crime I didn't know I committed. What was the crime and why must it be approached from the point of view of a crime committed anyway? Sometimes we treat culture as though it's a mark of righteousness, a stamp of an elite group of belonging, thereby shutting the door on those who do not share our rituals. Not so. Culture is meant to be inclusive and relevant to everyday life. It's not a relic to be propped up. We're all for promoting culture and even ensuring the longevity of our mother tongue. However, let's not neglect to acknowledge the truth that culture must be organic, an expression of a life being lived in the present continuous tense. It can also be an evolving shared experience arrived at by a con conscious or unconscious consensus to preserve that shared experience. Therefore, for our children to speak Igbo or Hausa or Yoruba, we must naturally or even artificially create the relevance and need for the language. Trips to the village, get together with family members that speak the language. Of course, we too must speak the language at home. Some may say, why does culture matter? Why should I speak in my mother tongue? For the individual, not only does language and a shared culture expose them to a layered identity and a sense of obligation to a wider community, this in a world that is increasingly self-centered, Culture brings perspective by broadening the vocabulary by which the individual may assimilate and even interrogate life. You could compare it with the option of enjoying a rich variety buffet versus the same set menu every day of the week, 52 weeks in the year for the rest of your life. I know what I would choose. Recently, I read about how a traditional ruler of a certain Nigerian town interrupted what was said to be the mob justice of a woman supposedly caught in adultery as the townspeople asserted that her first son was not the legitimate offspring of her husband, now dead. They were poised to make her swear and undergo some ritualistic form of adjudication when the wise ruler blocked their moves by stating simply that what was required was a DNA test to settle the matter, pure and simple. You could say that particular culture had reached its point of transition. Nigeria is blessed with a rich buffet of cultures and languages. As a people, we must be prepared to preserve the old but to do so with an eye on the evolving state of affairs. We must be part of a living cultural revolution or else vainly hold on to a dead relic. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know. Yes, uh, So, but, 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 but really, um, like you said, culture evolves. Um, that's why even in law, um, when a culture, it's um, that sometimes you say the culture is um, barbaric. Uh, there are three tests for a, a culture for it to become, um, you know, relevant in law. Is it um, repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience? Is it uh, contrary to public policy? And I can't really remember the third one now. And so there are some of our cultures, like that culture um, that you were talking about, is um, not only repugnant to natural justice, it's also, you know, contrary to public policy. The ruler was uh, actually a lawyer. Uh, exactly. And so that's, <laughs> that's why, why he had to use those uh, validity tests. We mm. call it validity tests, you know, for a culture. So some of these cultures were cultures that, um, you know, we practiced those days when, um, you know, there were no, you know, technology to mm. actually test this thing. It's like even some of our adage that 1,000 holes and cutlasses cannot break down a rock. And I tell you, just put one dynamite, it will bring it down. <laughs> you know? That's so, my favorite thing to do. So, so and then, but then for language, it's very important. Um, sometimes we are also um, not unmindful of the fact that it should play a very important role. But the world we live in today, our mother tongue, whether we like it or not, is English. We interact in English every day. We do businesses with English. And so sometimes you find your default mode you speak English at home. And then in some cases, you know, intermarriages will marry from outside of our tribe. And then that conscious effort to speak your language to your children is not there. And that's why you see some tribe will tell you, no, you must marry from home because they want to preserve okay. that language. And, you know, but for some of us, it's not, uh, we try to make conscious effort to speak it to our children, even give them the name, you know, so that they'll have that identity. But we are losing it. And the earlier we also try to remember and try to take it back, take those parts that are good 
and retain them and marry them with modernity, the better for all of us. I, I think culture, right, it's, it's identity and we must guide it jealously. Mm. Um, I agree that there are some repugnant uh, yes. ones that we should, you know, do away with, but we should not lose that identity. Over time, with the advent of uh, internet and uh, social media, there are some things, some culture that young guys today will tell you is not cool. But it's our culture. It's identity. It's us as a people. You know? And it's a story we must continue to tell ourselves. Paint our culture positively so that our yeah. kids would push those cultures. You know, otherwise, because now, if you'd ask me, um, over time, you notice the white, there's this thing about the white and the black person. It's, mm. it's fashionable now to be light-skinned mm. because you, know, you, you tend to associate light beauty. skin to beauty. Yeah. European version. What happened to the of black Caucasian. beauty, the African Nubian that was mm -hmm. like sought after in those days? It's a narrative, it's a story we tell ourselves and we need to begin to change that. We need to preserve our culture because the only thing we can bequeath to our children and we should not allow this external influence to take that Robots. away from us. Yeah. You see, I can see why the friend of yours castigated you, really, because, you know, it's not I'm saying she's right, but I can see where she was coming from, because unfortunately, we, you know, we don't seem to place enough emphasis on retaining or teaching our kids our, our language. And unfortunately, every time we lose culture, our own culture, we then gain the Western culture. You know, it's not like we're, we're losing it and then we're gaining something better. We, we drop that and then we now take on somebody else's culture that doesn't actually quite fit with our background or the way we are. Um, culture, language, definitely for me, is vital because language is about identity. It also gives self-esteem. You know, it makes you feel Connects proud. You to other people. Yeah, and I mean, why? If you lose your language, then what is to tell anybody that you know you are from here and the other person is from there? Because when you lose your language, you also lose other things that come with language. See, there are so many proverbs that my mom used to tell me about in in Igbo. I can't even say them now. Why? Because I've, you know, I've you. lost that. I've lost that side of myself. So I really think it's important that we we um, protect our culture to no, a degree. But yes. Even what, but so the reason me, I even brought up yeah. my friend very quickly because mm -hmm. I want to hear is that it's not so much that. I don't want my children to speak Igbo. Is that the approach of making you feel as if you're a criminal for nothing? That's not the approach. You, you need to understand that, that trying to the tell child is being destroyed. So I'm to preserve that culture, the approach should be let's steep them in a world where it's natural for them to see the relevance. No, of, but it's not an artificial. But I, can, I, can, I can see why the but person attacked you. No, because they're attacking me. Will you just maybe not you, you, you? But you see, the problem and is I would attack before somebody. it was you know it was the done thing to when you come back from wherever you start speaking from from you know from all over the place and people even recognize that and, and thought oh you know it elevates you above mm. so in her mind she's looking at you being unapologetic yeah. about the and fact that am. your children don't speak am. your language let, let me like slamming women let me for wearing um, weave on mm. if you make the nubian look more attractive then they'll uh, you know you don't don't be attacking people about their so life look is attractive i'm more of a doer than a talker mm -hmm. and this or talk nadu nadu <laughs> and this is so important to me that i did a book Okay. on my childhood Excellent. and documented the culture, the Yoruba culture that I was socialized to. In that book, you find songs, you find folk tales, mm. you find the Recipes, intangible everything. part. Yes, food. Mm. You find the intangible and the tangible parts of that culture mm. in that book. Because, mm. look, you speak it to the children. It doesn't end with the language. Mm. There's well, more that, to is it. Is a song in that book? There are Ol songs. Oluro Mbi or Jem Quite a lot of them. I have also. You need to bring Babu it when next you come. Mm -hmm. I have uh, um, a lady Jife, a lady Jife. A lot of our so children don't even know. So what is culture to you? Yeah. I, I want so to know. Cu culture to me just as I said, it's your identity. Mm. I'm a speech coach. I teach, you know, English as a second language, you know, to second language speakers of the English. Mm. But you see, I will still speak my language and even my dialect. I will still tell proverbs, use proverbs as I speak, mm. you know, even when I'm speaking English. I love Chinua Achebe mm -hmm. because the way he, yeah. he transliterated mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the why I proverbs. Said, that's why I said you will still will, fill the ego. Exactly. That's, those yes. Yes. that's know, why I said you, they will have to. You can't do away with one. There had to be a fusion of the two, and that's why you find out that some of those writers, 
Yeah. You know, they have a, they, they find a way of intertwining yeah. mm -hmm. yes. you know, the language with English. Right. That is you the know, burden like, of even, globalization. Even Nandia used to, to do it. Yeah. If, you can't, if I can't see because the coin, yeah, then mm -hmm. I better number. Mm -hmm. and, and you know Sorry, what I, I like about We've culture and why we must preserve ours, no matter how strong this globalization pull is mm -hmm. on us. The Indians will still do their namaste, even mm -hmm. if they find themselves at Chatham House. Mm -hmm. The Italians. What about so, the Chinese? Yeah, the all Chinese. Of them. All of them. You know, so we must okay, the French. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> uh -huh, all we can do is set out our stall. The real conversation takes off from here. So keep your comments coming in on our Facebook page, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. We look forward to making a date with you this time next week, same channel. But till then, let's keep advocating for a better society. In day one. Puyaka. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.